good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Um, hey Don, first time I can watch your show live, listening to your replays since years. Thanks for the alpha. You're a legend. You're the legend, my friend. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. Um, guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Guten Tag. Does Don just answer questions from chat randomly? I answer most questions, I would say. As long as it's not either a dumb question or like sometimes I don't catch it, obviously. But if it's a good question, you can always ask them again. <coughs> appreciate your time, Don. I appreciate yours. Anyway, um, we have a little bit to talk about. It's been very little shows recently. Um, Cred has been incredibly sick. Um, if you're wondering why he has not been tweeting or posting or whatever. Um, so, and then I don't want to run Casual Friday alone. It seems a little bit depressing. So we've been skipping on that, but he should be better soon. Hopefully, if you send him thoughts and prayers, maybe he'll get better soon. Um, no, he just absolutely got nuked. Um with like high fever and everything on top of it. So yeah, you should send him your best wishes. I, I, I'm sure he would appreciate that. <laughs> um, this price action is amazing. Uh, what do you mean? Because I think most people would fucking or like are fucking hating this. But yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Um, before we start the show, big shout out to Wu for sponsoring it. Really appreciate their support. They've been loyal, loyal partners and uh, amazing partners as well. So if you would like to support them, go check them out. Links are in the description. If not, also cool. Uh, there is no requirement for you to do so. <laughs> it's just me mentioning it. Anyway, Woo Goats, yes, they've been excellent. And they're doing cool, cool shit. They recently added a... Um, a meme coin index that you can trade which is quite cool when you don't want to just trade one of them but all of them I think it's a little bit late on that but uh, I mean uh, if the market catapults upwards again that would be fun and if not it's a nice short probably so anyway <sighs> I don't just wondering I've been with my girlfriend for five years but realized that I'm gay how can I solve that is this going to be a new thing? Every show, someone asks me what they <laughs> what they should be doing um, about about their girlfriend because they're gay. Um, you should pull the stop loss, bro. That's what you should be doing. Same answer as, as always. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway... Um, we have a few things to talk about. I I won't make it long and boring. I, I, I'll try at least. I was about to say I promise, but I can never promise that because I, I tend to rant and blabber on and on and on. But we'll, we'll try to keep it concise uh, and to the point. And then we can do like questions and stuff afterwards. Uh, so high time frame wise, uh, looking at Bitcoin, uh, the monthly actually closed quite nice last last month uh, made a new high that's good this month kind of pull back month ish but so far um, it's trading still trading above um, above support which is also good uh, monthly is just unequivocally I think that's a word uh, bullish for now um, the only way where this would be like midterm bearish would be if it loses 60k, right? Above 60k, it's very hard to make like a higher time frame bearish case, as in like a monthly bearish case. Um, so that's quite good. Like it, it's last month, it had the possibility to give us a little bit of a pullback. This month um, opened much better. Obviously still can pull back, but um, it's a much better, much better um, resistance to trade above. Uh, the weekly time frame is a really, really odd one because this is the same, like the same kind of resistance, obviously. And you can see how the market's been playing with that, right? So basically bounced from, bounced from support or just like very narrowly front ran the support 
uh, got rejected by resistance, front ran the support a little bit, broke resistance, is now sitting on top of it, right? Now, this is obviously not the best. Um, you don't like, I generally don't like uh, breakouts that look like this. Because when you have breakouts, you want them to kind of just move away from the level instead of just immediately going back to retest it. And this is like I would I would call this like more than an immediate retest because uh, the week afterwards was just like a, a down week and um, there was not really any urgency there. So that's not the best, but obviously still trading above above uh, that support, which makes it OK but uh, you would obviously want to see a little bit more urgency there. Um, the longer it hangs around that support, uh, the, the weaker the breakout is. Um, but still, given that the monthly looks good, it's not the end of the world. And if it does pull back, there's a nice support level at 60 that we front ran uh, by a tiny bit uh, last time. And I think in general, like if you've looked at the title, um, it's about the S&P pulling back. I think that would be a good excuse to pull back a little, but um, the S&P has been in up only mode. So like betting on that weakness to persist and we'll talk about the S&P in a sec. Uh, is also like a little bit of a dangerous game, right? But uh, the monthly looks very good. The weekly, uh, I mean, that's a breakout, but it's not the greatest breakout, right? So that's a little bit on the, a good side still, but uh, not as good as the monthly time frame. And on the daily time frame, um, something very curious is happening, um, which is we have this chop range and we keep on chopping inside of it. It's been quite accurate. Um, support held. Last week we talked about this. We're like, this is the last line. Like this is where bulls need to step up, step up because the support is kind of old. Um, this one is not as bad. And uh, bulls did step up, step up, uh, closed above the the midline of the of the range, and went all the way to the top. Now, I'm honestly like a little bit surprised. I would say, like I I thought the moment we reclaim uh, the mid range, we would go to the to the resistance, obviously, but then probably just push past it. And uh, instead, what we did was close above that um, resistance, go to the next one, and then get strongly rejected right and that is uh obviously not not the greatest but also not that bad realistically because this, this is the first test of the resistance you have a test here or two and another one here so the more often you test that resistance the more likely it is to break so like if it goes for another test in in a couple of days uh, there's a good chance that even if it's bearish it would do something like this right let's say Let's say this this goes sideways here or something comes back up. Uh, at that point, it would probably break out. Even if it's bearish, it would do that and then just fade it. And then you can you can be bearish, right? But you would still get a nice bullish move. And obviously, if it's bullish, you can just keep running, right? So the more often times this resistance is tested, um, the better for bulls. Now, obviously, it's a little bit depressing that this one uh, didn't didn't play out as like a resistance breaker whatever audio gone shouldn't be uh, and i didn't have any any drop packages i'm pretty sure i'm getting trolled again but <laughs> you never know because i have had like quite weird problems so keeps buffering for me to for you for you too well very weird because I have not been dropping frames. Must be on the YouTube side of things then, which is odd. Let me check. Oh, actually, I have been dropping frames. Okay, so it is on my side. A little bit. Should be okay. Don't pull a mic, please. Yeah, I will. I will not touch anything. Anyway, uh, that's the 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 grand scheme of things. If 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 it's buffering for you, just. Uh, like just watch it with a five minute delay or something. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. It's been I've had that issue once before now. Anyway, um, heard about duck is running marathon, real or fake? Uh, real. When does that 68.2K level become shitty? Uh, which one? This one. Um, 
good question when it if it breaks another time like to the downside like if it breaks to the downside i mean then again still not that shitty it would be good on the retest then but i think like it's a decent level you want to you want to have it on your chart i think it's the the pivotal point basically um so i don't think that's going to be getting too shitty get broad, broadband dude i have the best internet you could possibly have uh so that's not the issue it might be that they're fucking with the lines or whatever um so yeah like i it could not be better which is a little bit of a scam because it's obviously not that great even have business internet which is guaranteed to not do this gonna have to talk with them anyway <clears throat> if you bought the 68.3k breakout the other day would you just keep holding for now um i probably wouldn't have bought it just because i i don't like this price action i don't like where we are um but if i did because i thought price was gonna go higher i would probably hold it yeah um and then go to the lower time frames to get invalidations like But then again, where do you get your invalidation? It's actually quite tough. Like it's already kind of looking not so great, <laughs> to be quite honest, on, on that time frame. Uh, so I don't know. But I would say uh, if you're bullish and you think it's going to go higher um, and uh, like if you're bullish and you think it's going to go higher, I think it makes sense to be to just stay in your position until it's invalidated but anyway that's that's bitcoin i think it's not that interesting um but it is driving the show um everything else has been basically getting ragdolled around by bitcoin which is uh, not fun for the old coin traders but very fun for the bitcoin holders um let me check the comments Um, Don, do you think we have cycle topped? What probably would you give to that? I think it's very unlikely, but it's possible. I would give it like a 10% chance maybe. Um, I think like short term, this could be like, this could be topping action basically akin to what we did here, where we basically like we chopped around uh above the, the range right we're doing the same thing here where we're kind of chopping around above the range and then we fucked off uh but i would think that even if it was right like i think that is much more likely than this being the cycle top i think uh, there's gonna be higher prices down the line Sounds like you lean more bullish now, bro. Mm, it's a tough, if it's a tough spot. Like TA wise, it's really like there's there's a big difference basically between the TA and what I what I think, um, which makes me just not want to touch the market because it means that one of like either my TA is off or my my thinking slash gut feelings off, and I really don't like to trade that way. Like usually they're kind of aligning. Right now I look at the TA and it's not that bad. Um, my gut feeling says it's probably gonna go down um so like when it doesn't align like both of those i just don't do shit <laughs> which um i think makes a lot of sense right like if if you have two different voices in your head i mean there's and i think a lot of people have this problem where they trade and but they stay they kind of have like conviction both ways uh and the moment market goes the market goes down they're like oh shit I should listen to listen to this and I should should have done this and that and then they get bearish and the opposite if the market goes up right and that's gonna fuck you over so bad because it basically makes you sell the bottom and, and buy buy back the top uh, especially when it's choppy like this so when when I'm not like when my stuff is not in alignment I either trade very small or not at all um, still in doge yeah i have i have doge and i have litecoin um still those positions um don't like the litecoin trade as much now but um it's small 
as I talked about last week, so I'm okay with it. Um, what do you think about the pullback into summer with tightening conditions cause of inflation running hot, then rally through autumn um, into next year into a top? Uh, I honestly, like the whole macro situation eludes me. Like inflation hot, is that bullish bearish? Like who the fuck knows at this point? Like, uh, I don't know. Like I don't make predictions based on that. I'm just like, I look at the S&P, right? And I said that we would look at this. I look at the S&P and it's like going quite crazy. Um, but it's also like if it pulls back, it has a little bit of room to go. Like there's decent support at a prior all time high. And that's a little bit away. And um, that would kind of cause mayhem in other markets. So I think there's a little bit of risk there, but also like, yeah, it's been up only. So akin to what we had in previous moves, right? It's quite crazy how this, how the S&P just does this shit, right? Like over and over and over again. And then it has like one crash, one crash like month or so. And then it keeps going like this again, fucking wild. Um, so I think this could pull back and that would lead to, to not good prices in, in crypto, but I would also not want to bet on it, right? Like I wouldn't want to base the short thesis on it um, because the traditional markets are not my, my playground. So like if this moves too far from, from an area of where I think it's going to hold up just fine, I get a little bit more nervous, but that's it. With the today's inflation numbers, would you say it's bullish because the numbers are bearish? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying, dude. Like, <laughs> it's bullish because it's bearish. It's very like just fucking ignore it. Um, at least that's what I'm doing. I'm too dumb to do it for this shit. Like people are, um, people are kind of making up wild, wild theories, and uh, I don't think it necessarily makes a lot of sense. Um, I think I figured out what the internet is so shit because we have guests like quite a bit of, of guests right now and they're all jumbling about in the in the internet. I'm guessing that has fucked with it a little bit. My apologies for that. Um, like I said, should be should be better on the replay. If it is annoying, just wait for the replay. Um, Isn't being out of the market the same as being short? Uh, depends. If your base denominator is Bitcoin, like if you're like, uh, I only care about how much Bitcoin I have, then yes, uh, I really don't care about how much Bitcoin I have or any crypto for that matter. Like for me, my base nom denominator is dollar or euro. Um, so for me, being in crypto is being long and then not being in a position short. Uh, it's not short, but just not in a position if you're forced to buy higher it's the same as shorting and covering higher and I, I think you're thinking about trading in a very wrong way but like i said this is basically depends on whether you you actually like i want to have a bitcoin position or not like I, i'm in a bitcoin position or like in a crypto position generally it always has an end date right like i'm like okay i can i can justify being bullish for this year or maybe like another year um but that's it Right. And then I'm like, OK, I'm happy with what I got. And then I just take trades. Um, but if it's the other way around where you're like, like I would kill myself if, if Bitcoin runs away from me and I like I, I sold 60 and now it's at 90K and that really hurts my feelings, then you should obviously trade a little bit different. But for me, that doesn't really make much sense. Like a trade is a trade, right? It doesn't matter. Like if I'm trading from 90 to 120K, or from 60 to 90k like it makes no difference to me don can i get excited over if ptc going up 0.1 percent yeah we can talk about it so if ptc um it's been i mean obviously still shit and the monthly is actually quite horrendous on if ptc um like let me actually put these on the right chart so it's not as crowded like look at this, this is the monthly time frame, right? I think this is actually quite a good chart now. Um, and we had a range here and that broke to the downside and then we retested the bottom of the range 
uh, we failed also failed the, the trend line here um, and it's kind of it's kind of shit but also like it's been very stubborn it's been like hanging around that resistance for a long time and um, it's actually been <laughs> believe it or not performing better than a lot of the other old coins it's just the other old coins have been uh, have been dumping right so for example solana has been been the one where i got roasted to to helen back for saying like hey i think it makes more sense to be a little bit on the more cautious side of things against eve uh, i said that here it nuked it went back up I, I was the laughing stock of town for like i don't know like three weeks where people are just constantly in my comments being like ah but what about soul uh, it's exactly where it was when I said it first. Uh, and I still think that is the case, right? And the reason why I think that is because, um, I mean, now it's even more apparent, I think, than it was the first time I said it. The first time I said it was because I thought Solana was a little bit overhyped relative to ETH. And uh, now I just think on, like, basically Solana's running into the same problems that ETH is, like, has run into in the past. And people kind of realize that Solana has to deal with the same shit. It's the same kind of same kind of problems. Um, and if you have the same kind of problems, you're gonna go to to the trusty old rather than um, the not so trusty new, in my opinion, uh, or like a very very new thing where you assume that there's not gonna be problems. Tail is all this time basically. You you have like you had ETH, and then like actually actually this is how it started so you had bitcoin right so you had bitcoin here so bitcoin and then i don't know if you guys remember but back in the day uh the bitcoin network during bull markets would get congested as fuck and then you would have to trade like uh, like you would have to pay um a shitload of money to actually transact um in bitcoin which made it really fucking annoying and then people like okay fuck it uh we're just gonna do our transactions in litecoin or whatever and then eventually it settled into eth right like litecoin was a, a one that was used quite a while um because people were like oh this is so much cheaper and then the people were like moving to eth and they were like this is the future um this is so much cheaper and then eth got so fucking expensive and so shitty to use that people just kind of went and went like, oh, what can we use instead of ETH? And then there was a bunch of other uh, coins like ETH that people tried to go to. They all kind of had the same problems at the end of the day. And then they went to Seoul, right? And it's kind of like, it's. I see this every single cycle and people are like, um, people think this is new, right? Where they're like, um, oh yeah, this and that coin doesn't have this problem, but it's inherently a problem with with how how crypto works right um at least for now where the more it gets used the worse the product gets and um yeah now the solana people are running into it um so i think now it's a little bit of a double whammy i think solana is overhyped um, in comparison to eve not necessarily in comparison to a lot of other things but in comparison to eve and also like i mean it's not as fun to use anymore doesn't really matter though um but yeah, anyway, uh, if still not great, uh, still not great. And I think generally speaking, um, it would be better if if BTC went down for a while still. Um, and I think if the market goes down and that's my feeling, my TA disagrees. My TA says market probably goes up. My feeling is market probably goes down. So pick whatever you want. Um, could go up, could go down, but that's just kind of how I think right now. Um, but if the market goes down, I think ETH BTC could outperform, but in a shitty way, as in could still go down, but I could see other altcoins dump harder. And um, then you have relative outperformance of ETH, but you're not making any money on ETH USD. Um, I think that would make, that's one of the most plausible ways for ETH to outperform. Otherwise, I think like if the market goes up, which is also like, I'm not saying this is impossible just because I have a feeling that maybe uh, like in in my head it's more likely to go down than up um so uh, if the market goes up i think there's a good chance that other things are gonna outperform and i think dogecoin would be one um that probably outperforms uh, eve by quite a bit if the market goes up and um 
maybe even Solana, right? Like it, it kind of, like the, if the market goes up, like these kind of, these, the, the hype train can go on for a little longer, but I don't think for too much longer uh, on a relative basis. Uh, sorry for the repeated question, Doug. Would appreciate your input on identifying the Bitcoin cycle top. Is it time-based or sentiment and PA mainly? Uh, mostly sentiment, I would say, and a little bit of PA. Uh, time-based, not so much. Um, but this cycle could be very different from previous cycles, just based on the fact that um, we have now an ETF, right? So all the old wisdom and, I mean, this is one thing that I can proudly say, right, is that I caught a lot of these cycle tops, right? I was very vocally and I mean, there's still articles where I was like, where I was vocally bearish at this cycle top here at around like 15, 16K uh, before it went to three. Uh, I was like, this, everything is going to create um, And I mean, there was a few tops in between where I was quite accurate, but um this one I was also quite accurate on, right? Where I was like, this is just shit price action and it kind of looks like like very overextended, quite risky. Um, but now like I don't have, like I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna just call it the same way that I did in the past because I think the market could be very different, right? So I could just miss the next one. Um, as in like, it takes me a while longer to flip which is okay at the end of the day. Uh, but for me right now, I don't necessarily think the cycle top is in. Um, and I think you're going to notice when, like when you get complete and utter craziness and the market keeps going up, up, up. And then at some point it nukes like massively and then bounces. I, I'm very likely to kind of be looking for, for a cycle top, right? But that is not necessarily something that we've been, we've been seeing. Doug is training for a half marathon, so I doubt he smokes. I'm not training for a half marathon, I'm training for a marathon. And I'm going to have to run it in like two months. So that's going to be fun. From untrained, completely sleep deprived because of having a baby to running a marathon in three months. I'll, I'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So far, so good. Marathons are bad for you. Yeah, but so is not moving. So, and it, it's not about like, I mean, I think generally like this, these kind of things, like maybe yeah, short term, whatever, like you fuck your body, especially the way I do it. Um, I don't think I would recommend anyone to do it in three months, but um, sometimes it's good to like set yourself a goal and just fucking do it because it trains your willpower. And I think a lot of people like that. Don, do you think we're unlikely to have an old season? No, I think we're very likely to have one. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought like Doge and Litecoin. Um, I think it might take a while. I, it doesn't really feel like retail is very interested at this point, which is quite interesting given how high market like Bitcoin is. I thought retail would come in much earlier. And I mean, we are retail at the end of the day, but I think I thought the retail masses would come in. Um, but so far, not really. Um, a little bit, yes, of course, with like all the meme coins and everything, but nothing uh, uh, to the scale that we've seen in last, like previous runs. Uh, right now, it's very muted still. Um, how did you meet your wife? I went skydiving with her. That's how I met her. <laughs> Um, how big of a chance we hit 40k? Oh, I think that uh, there is, there's a risk of it. Uh, I think that would be the low, the low, low. Like, I don't like, if you get to buy 40k, you thank God. And you're like, okay, now I'm, now I'm a believer and I will go to church every Sunday because God gave me a gift. Um, I think there's a risk that it goes to 40k, but it's relatively slim 
but if if it goes to 40k that's a gift so yeah um Maybe retail just think crypto is a scam now after losing all their money a bunch of times. I mean, very fair, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily even even argue that crypto is a scam. There's very little that in crypto that isn't a scam, to be fair. That called Bitcoin top and also his singleness top by meeting his wife skydiving. You have a cool life story. Oh, yeah, there's there's a lot more like the, the Donald law. I've gone through some shit in my life. A lot of people don't don't know the like some people that have been around know know a little bit more, but it's been it's been been a ride. But yeah, can't complain. It's going great. Anyway, um like I said, Eve still weak and still looks like it wants to go lower. Um but I think there's a good chance that that's gonna outperform other things. Um I generally think if if on a risk on a like measured in risk right i think if is a really good play um over other altcoins right because i think if you buy solana there's a good chance that you're gonna get a 30 40 pull uh, 40 percent pullback thrown on your head i think that's very unlikely with if for example uh, if you're trading like anything else there's a good chance that you get massive pullbacks i think if you get a pullback on if it's gonna be more muted um, but also, obviously, the upside is is less uh, than than on other other coins. But I think just based on kind of like you're risking not that much um, for a decent reward, I think it's actually not that bad of a play. I just think TA wise, uh, looking at this, it's still in a downtrend and it's still weak, right? So nothing's changed on that front, and uh, it's probably gonna be nicer lower. Um, so if you get it lower, that, that'd be nice. 0 0.04 uh, to 0 0.043. I think anything in between there, and I, I'm kind of going to have to pull the trigger. But I've been, I've been very patient on ETH, and um, it's, so far it's been paying off, right? Uh, I was one of the few people not to toot my own horn, uh, which I'm kind of doing, but that, that was like, I think ETH's a bad play uh, in this range up here. And um, it was, and that was very non non consensus. Um, but I think if it goes if it goes like another twenty percent on the ratio lower, I think it's actually going to be an incredible incredible uh, opportunity. So Eve's going to be interesting uh, soon, I think, especially if it accelerates to the downside. Um, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for. But I'm also entertaining that this might just go up eventually like relatively soonish so like it's getting harder to hold off on eve uh, but right now the, the the price action is just garbage right so um and it's not low enough for me to just be like okay fuck the price action i'm just gonna buy don why do you think all coins are doing so poorly with bitcoin going sideways um because the, the reason why altcoins are doing so poorly, in my opinion, is because retail isn't really uh, flooding in. Like, it's not like we have that backdrop of there's a bunch of money flowing in. And there's a lot of money flowing out, like, generally in crypto all the time. You have a lot of projects, a lot of teams. They're all funded by mostly, like, they're funding themselves by selling their tokens. And... So money that goes into the market kind of has to pay all of these teams, right? It's just how it is. Like if you if you look at crypto, right? You have like you have the big crypto thing, and that's the money that's in. And then you have like so that's crypto, the money in crypto. And then you have like a bunch of a bunch of teams that develop and do whatever the fuck and a bunch of like influencers and whatever. Um, and they have a bunch of crypto, right? Like, and they're basically, they're basically taking money out uh, for themselves, right? 
And then you obviously have new participants. And I mean, this is very Ponzi stylish, but that's just kind of how crypto is right now, because it's not like it's I'm writing Ponzi instead of, <laughs> oh man, new people. Uh, so there's new inflows, right? Uh, and it, uh, new inflow, whatever. And so you have new inflow going into crypto, right? Excuse my drawings. So they they put money in, but at the same time, like you have a bunch of teams and I could have put this in the bubble and whatever, it doesn't matter. You get the point. So that's a constant drain on the money in crypto. Um, and we currently have the ETF flows that are good for Bitcoin, but only for Bitcoin, right? And as long as you don't get new money going into the rest of the market, um, all of these kind of teams and all of these rugs and all the scammers and just in general, they bleed the market out as long as no new inflows come in, right? So you have basically Bitcoin going sideways and that's because like a bunch of selling is absorbed by the ETF flows um, and you don't really have new people to sustain the, the, the old coin Ponzi's. So you kind of have a PVP market. I mean, exchanges need to pay uh, their team. Cryptos have developers that need to be paid uh, a bunch of money basically leaves the ecosystem every month and you have obviously like and this is kind of like um introduced by inflation in all of these coins and all that kind of shit right so basically if you don't get like a greater fool into the market like these will bleed um and so far we haven't been able to attract the greater fools um the retail greater fools um but we do have, and kind of like the, the, the current run on a lot of these altcoins has been attributed and like can be attributed in my mind to a bunch of Bitcoin holders basically making a bunch of money and taking that into, into altcoins. Like a bunch of crypto natives made a bunch of money and then they start like rolling into, into some altcoins and they've been doing well. Um, doesn't inflows from ETFs rotate into alts? Uh, not necessarily like uh, at some point like like just think about it like the, the 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 average bitcoin holder right is he gonna sell his bitcoin because it goes up and put it into alts or is he gonna just hold his bitcoin i think over the last cycles um, people have just been so altcoin focused that i think the bitcoin holder crew and the altcoin holder crew is a very very different um subset of people and so like the Bitcoin holders, they're not going to rotate into all coins necessarily. Um, so that's why the all coins aren't doing as well, even though Bitcoin is doing great. Um, but that can change the moment. The moment you get like all coins lifting up off generally, um, a bunch of Bitcoin holders might be happy to take profit in Bitcoin and then rotate into the all coins. And that's kind of what leads to cycle tops in this space generally. Right. Like you have Bitcoin goes up that gets a bunch of media attention and a bunch of people buy Bitcoin or other old coins or whatever. And then Bitcoin kind of takes a breather and all coins just go completely ballistic. Right. And then a bunch of Bitcoin holders um, and the, the price is already quite high. Right. So people are just like not that interested in buying Bitcoin anymore. And a bunch of Bitcoin holders are just kind of like jumping into the old coins because they're going while Bitcoin is now going sideways. And then it gets like keeps getting harder and harder to maintain the high prices that Bitcoin is currently at. Uh, so that starts like going down. And you have a bunch of over leveraged apes um, that are kind of like betting on the prices going high even more. Uh, and that nukes it. And then suddenly like the old coins do this too, because this means like if Bitcoin goes down, risk generally, uh, like risk appetite goes down. And then it's kind of like a, a vicious circle um, of sorts. Like it's hard to maintain high Bitcoin prices if all coins just completely go ballistic um, because people are going to rotate from Bitcoin into all coins. That's how it used to be anyway. Now with the ETF, um, I mean, how are you going to rotate out of your ETF into all coins? <laughs> it's a completely different ball game, right? Because there's not real, like, it's not like you can just go to your exchange, sell your Bitcoin and buy some all coins. Not now anyway. Maybe down the line. So that's that. Um, Solana, 
I mean, still strong, still decent looking char. I like, uh, like on a relative basis, I think this is probably gonna lag behind, but just generally it's not a bad chart, right? Like I'm, I'm not saying like this is, this is gonna generally um, nuke. I'm just saying like, I think against Eve, it might be a little bit of like an oversubscribed play, but I could be wrong on that. And then other old coins like Dogecoin still looking strong. Um, and I think if that pulls back a little, I'm just going to buy more. Um, Litecoin USD looks excellent still. Um, it's the Bitcoin pair that kind of looks like shit. Um, and this breakout ish here is not really doing anything. So that's obviously not great short term. So. Litecoin has the possibility to go back to like 70, 80, whatever, uh, I think, based on how this breakout is playing out. Um, but if it does, I would actually be interested in buying more just to just to give this like high, high time frame thing a little bit of a chance. But who the fuck knows? Um, the Litecoin play, like I said, is that's the, the risky one because Litecoin is shit. Um, AVAX, I don't like AVAX as much. Um, I think AVAX literally only went up because Solana went up and AVAX and Solana went up last cycle together. I think AVAX kind of like, I don't know. It's the laggard play. Like if I, if I want to buy AVAX, I buy Solana instead. And I would rather not. I think AVAX is a worse Solana basically. Yeah, it's up today a little bit, but I'm just, just, I think it, AVAX literally got rescued by Solana. If Solana didn't run, AVAX would be floating dead. But I could be wrong with that front, but I personally don't like it. Are you coming back to friend tech? Um, I might be in the, in the chat room from time to time, but not really, no. Like, race a shit talk like a bunch of my friends, and I, like, I don't like it. Um, if, if there's going to be an airdrop of whatever for the points i'll dump them and move on i don't like i just just something i take issue with um like people running running stuff like like i mean it's the same with elon musk i just can't stand it like if you if you're running something you have to be at least a little bit professional in my eyes um but yeah that's kind of that's the issue that i have like I could be bullish like this. I, I generally like the concept of friend tech, um, but I I don't like, I don't want to support people that should talk my friends basically. Don, why do all coins move in unison with Bitcoin like in microseconds? Are there algorithmic bots regulating this price action? Didn't find good answers online. Sorry to ask again, but curious, yes. There's bots that trade, trade it. Um, quite a few, um, obviously. Also, just generally, if bit like, but yeah, it's bots mostly. Frantic is just BitCloud. I think it's much better than BitCloud. Um, it's BitCloud 2.0. Yeah. What do you think about WIF? Um, if there's one thing, right, if there's one thing that I look at on, on memes, right, like like the moment they run out of steam, they get dangerous. Now, if you're a big believer in this thing, I would be my guest, right? Um, but generally, like for now, anyway, it's making, I mean, it hasn't broken the low, so technically it's not a downtrend yet, um, but it made lower highs. Um, it's dangerous like it, this is this is one where you could lose 90 percent of your money if you're holding it um but it could also have another leg right but i think the danger right now on this is quite high um that doesn't make it necessarily like the worst play in the world and if you have good reason to believe that whiff is gonna go up be my guess like the the biggest influencers of this cycle are shilling it so maybe but um yeah, uh, just there, if there's one thing, like the moment you start getting these kind of pullbacks, uh, danger level increases like a million fold, right? And then you're like, is this is the cycle top, is it not? And I cannot answer that. 
um, because like memes, it's very hard to predict when, when they start running out of steam. Um, but like for me, um, these are the things that you want to be trading on, like on the up only part bullish. And then, yeah, maybe you take like a, a nuke to the face, but then there's a good chance that it bounces and you get to sell somewhere um, decently close to your entry or even quite a bit higher. Um, when when you're trading this side of this side of the coin, right? Um, it's a little bit dangerous because you just need to look at other coins. The moment they start going down, look, and I'm not saying WIF is going to do this, right? But the moment they start going down, like where the fuck do you sell? I mean, like, like what the fuck do you do? Like, do you sell here or do you sell here or do you sell down here? Like, you know what I mean? So you, you kind of have to be, you have to be quite nimble. Uh, I don't like it necessarily as like a, as like a, a play. Um, this, like, I, I like Dogecoin because I can kind of, there's an easy invalidation on, on it. Um, on WIF, it's quite hard. But if Dogecoin goes up, maybe WIF goes back up too. So you kind of make up your own mind. But I think a close below three would be quite catastrophic. So if you're bullish on WIF, um, it's trading quite a bit above three. But if it starts trading below three, I think that is a major shift in momentum. But also, if you start selling at three and it does this, you might be upset because there's a chance it does this and then it goes for another run. But then it's basically like you close it below three and you reopen above. And then there's a chance it just chops you out a bunch, but that's just kind of how it goes if you really want to trade these things. But yeah, it's it's more difficult to trade on um, on this side when it has slowed down, in my opinion. What would we get sooner, 300 sol or 4k EP? I mean, I think that's quite, <laughs> it's quite an easy one. 4K ETH quite a bit sooner than, than 300 SOL, in my opinion. So. I think WIF is still good if you think majors haven't topped yet and as long as influencers keep shilling it. I mean, it literally depends on influencers shilling it. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, the chart is nothing, it's just... Are influencers gonna go out and shield this shit? And there's a chance that they might, but if they abandon it, you you can abandon it. Where's the Doge invalidation? Uh, below 0 0.1, which is quite a bit away. Like I think the moment it starts losing 0 0.1, uh, right now that's the invalidation for me. Anyway, I think that's that's enough for today. Uh, thanks for the great questions. I really appreciate it. Sorry for the, the drop frames. I'm seeing that they're still going on, so that's not great. Um, but yeah, hope it was still enjoyable. Much love to you guys. Um, I'll try I'll try to make a miracle happen, or like I'll pray to the gods that Cred gets gets healthy again towards Friday, and then maybe we can do a Friday show. Um, and then we just, we can talk about this a little bit more in depth, but yeah. Um, before I leave, big shout out to Wu as well. Uh, appreciate their sponsorship a lot. Uh, go check them out, links are in the description. And uh, yeah, much love to you guys. Have a nice rest of your week. Maybe we see each other Friday. If not, I'm sorry, it's a little bit out of my hands. Um, and I mean, it's not Kret's fault either. He's literally dying, so. <laughs> um, yeah, you're just going to have to be patient. But yeah, much love. See you guys. Bye-bye.